Oh, what up? Welcome to the very first episode right here. This will be volume one of my CD collection. You know what I'm saying? I decided that I should start showing y'all guys some of my CDs that I collected over the years. You know, I got a very big collection. I got some stacks everywhere in my room. So I just might as well, you know, decide to show y'all some of the joints I caught. You know what I mean? So I hope y'all love this shit. You know what I'm saying? So let's get ready, shall we? So let's get this shit started. So the first CD I want to talk about is the Notorious B.I.G.'s second and his final album they ever did when he was alive, Life After Death, released in 1997. Y'all gosh must know what to do about this album. It's a fucking hip-hop classic, Biggie's second album. You no, know, very successful, very influential. I mean, definitely one of the best to ever do it. You know, like I said, this is his second album released in 1997. You guys should know that. In 1994, Biggie released the classic Ready to Die, which I do have in my collection. No, he was involved with the whole East Coast, West Coast beef, you know, with him and Tupac and shit like that. You know, Bad Boy and Death Row, you no, know, started Junior Mafia. You no, know, this album was released a couple weeks after he got killed on March 9th, 1997. You no, know, it's a sad day for hip hop. You no, know, he got killed in Los Angeles. You no, know, he was trying to, you know, doing like a little um life after death album party and you know it was crazy you know what i mean because you know biggie just died a year after tupac so the whole east coast west coast shit was getting real crazy at that period so we biggie you know got his life cut short at a very young age which is sad you know what i mean and um this album was, was released like a couple weeks after you know the album was released on march 25th of 97 you know, it's critically acclaimed, just like Ready to Die. I mean, if you're expecting something like Ready to Die, I mean, you will get that, but not as much. Because on Ready to Die was more street. It was more gangster, dark, and hardcore. I mean, but it's it's still, you still got the street shit. But on this album, it kind of had like more of a mainstream, you no know, pop, you no know, twist to it. But in a dope way, you know what I'm saying? In a good way, you know what I mean? Because, you know, around the time, you know, Bad Boy was, like, taking over the game. I mean, straight up, you know, with Big E, you know, Puffy, Mace, The Locks, you know, the list goes on and on and on. You know, definitely one of the best albums to come off the Bad Boy discography. You no, know, definitely a classic album right here. Definitely an album that every hip-hop head should must own their collection. Doesn't matter if you have this on CD, vinyl, or cassette tape, you should must own it. You know what I'm saying? This is a double-disc album. The singles as I was known for are Hypnotize, um, More Money, More Problems with Mace and Puffy. Um, what else? The Sky's the Limit, you know, with 112. You know, you got songs like I Love the Doe with Jay-Z and Angela Woodbush, classic. I got a story to tell, what's beef, Last Days with the Locks, love that song. Ten Crack Commandments, Going Back to Cali, Notorious Thugs, you no. Know, Long Kiss Goodnight, Biggie actually threw shots at Tupac on that song. You know, you know her body till somebody kills you. Love, that's a fucking classic. I mean, kicking kicking the door. You know, Biggie throwing shots at, you know, Ghostface, Raekwon, Nas, and Jay Wu with Damager. I mean, this album right here is fucking amazing. I mean, definitely love this album a lot. You no, know, the last album that Biggie ever made. This album was successful. Like, it sold millions of copies. Like, this album was the shit. You know what I mean? And plus, it was certified diamond. So, that tells you that, like, Biggie was going through a lot of shit when this album. And plus, a year before this album came out, you guys should know that he got into a car accident the day after Tupac passed away. Crazy. And that's how it kind of fucked up, you know, Biggie's leg. And that's why he had to walk where he came. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, this is a, a definitely amazing fucking album. It definitely has, like, a mafioso vibe to it. You know, around this time, you know, there's, like, this is definitely a fucking, a milestone defiant hip-hop album. I mean, definitely fucking love it. It's a classic, a must-have for all hip-hop heads. If you're a fan of, you know, Biggie, Bad Boy, East Coast hip-hop, the late 90s hip-hop, or you fan that, you know, everything that came out bad boy, then this is the album for you. So this is the Notorious B.I.G. 
Life After Death, released in 1997, must cop, definitely a classic. Next album is Nas's second album, It Was Written, released in 1996. Yep, the shit right here, another one, you know what I mean? Nas' second album, released two years after Illmatic, which came out back in 1994. You know, Nas' classic debut album, one of the best hip-hop albums of all time, you know what I mean? It's very influential to this day, you know, this is the second album. And um his best selling album to date, you know what I mean? Like this is the album that just made Nas the man, like pretty much. You know what I mean, yeah. He I mean he was hot on with Illmatic, but on this album right here it just took Nas to a whole new platform. I mean, just like Life After Duff, I mean you can get a little sense of Illmatic, but this album right here definitely has that like a commercial appeal to it. Cause you know the album, you know, features production from track masters and you know Dr. Dre. You know what I mean? But it's still a fucking amazing album. You know what I mean? In my opinion, this album features some of Nas's best lyricism. I don't care what nobody says. Like, he definitely, you know, stepped it up on this album, in my opinion. Like, the beats on this album are amazing. The whole concept, you know, the storytelling, it's, it's, on, it's fucking up to par. You know what I mean? Like, them shits is on point. Definitely love this album. One of my favorite hip-hop albums of all time. I mean, like, definitely have a mafioso vibe to it. Because, you know, around this time, around, like, you know, 95, 96, you know, a lot of East Coast rappers was, like, going through that whole mafioso phase, you know, like, what Raekwon did on Only Built for Cuban Links. Um, Jay-Z with Reasonable Doubt. Cool G Rap with 456. Nas on this one, it was written in AZ Do or Die. Like, the mafioso hip-hop phase was popping back then, you know what I mean, especially in the East Coast, so, like, this is, this album right here is actually one of them, you know what I mean, and, um, this album right here, it's, I mean, this fucking album is banging, I mean, straight up, um, the singles that I was known for are Street Dreams, The Message, If I Rule the World, Imagine That, with Lauryn Hill, you know, that was, like, a very big song back in 96, you know, you got songs like I Gave You Power, which is hands down one of my favorite songs in this whole fucking album. I mean, the fucking, yo, that song right there, one of Nas's best songs in his whole fucking career. Definitely my top 25 favorite Nas songs of all time. You know, Taken in Blood, Live Nigga Rap with Mob Deep, um, Affirmative Action, you know, the first appearance of The Firm. You know, with Nas, AZ, Cormega, Nature, Foxy Brown. Yo, Cormega fucking killed it on that song. I don't care what nobody says. You know, Suspect. I mean, like, this album right here, man, it's a fucking classic. I mean, Nas definitely did an excellent job with this joint right here. You know what I mean? Definitely one of my favorite hip-hop albums of 1996. I mean, like, to me personally, I feel like this album is kind of a bit underrated but it's still a fucking dope album you know what I'm saying like a lot of people say this album is a lot better than Illmatic I can see why but yeah like this album right here it definitely has like more of a cinematic vibe once you hear this shit like when you play this um it's like you're watching a damn movie you know what I'm saying like that's how fucking amazing and creative this album is so yeah if you're a fan of Nas if you're a fan of you no know, Queens British hip hop you know, East Coast hip hop from the mid 90s. This is the album for you. So, this is Nas. It was written, released in 1996. Classic. Pick it up. Next album is Tupac's third album, Me Against the World, released in 1995. Hands down, his best album. I don't care what nobody says. Definitely his, his magnum opus. My favorite album that Tupac ever did in his catalog. I mean, like, Tupac just put all his fucking emotions, like, he just went in on his album, like, definitely fucking love the lyricism and the production. I'm like, this album right here is so fucking amazing, you know what I'm saying? And, um, this album was released around the time when Tupac was locked up in prison, because you know that the whole rape shit that happened around, like, 1994, 
But, you know, Tupac, he didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? And the bitch who accused Tupac of trying to rape her, she lied. You know what I mean? Like, you know, he also got shot the same year and he got robbed. In fact, today marks 23 years since Pac was shot and robbed in Quad Studios in New York City. And, you know, he can't blame Biggie and Puffy for setting them up. And, you know, that would just spark the whole beef between the East Coast and West Coast. And, um, like, Tupac, he just, and he also had to go through the, uh, he also shot at two off-duty police officers in Atlanta in 1993 for, you know, trying to be up an innocent black dude. But, you know, the charges were dropped. Like, Tupac, he went through a lot on this album. And he also got into, you know, altercation with the Hughes brothers, you know, for Menace of Society. Like, Tupac went through a lot of shit. Like, he was, you know, dealing with paranoia. Like, he was just dealing with everything. I mean, like, he just spoke a lot of real shit with some. Like, in my opinion, this is one of Tupac's most relatable albums to date. Definitely his darkest. Um, this album right here, uh, Tupac Lips Now, um, Strictly for My Niggas, and The Down from the 97, are like my favorite albums that Tupac ever did. And the Thug Life album. Yes, I do like All Eyes on Me. But this album right here is way better than All Eyes on Me. I don't care what nobody says. The single says um is known for um Me Against the World, So Many Tears, Dear Mama, you know what I'm saying? Temptations. You also got songs like Duff Around the Corner, If I Die Tonight, one of my favorite songs in this album, Lord Knows, Fuck the World. Old school with pop paid homage to the old school rappers of the you know 80s. You no know, young niggas, very dope song. Heavy in the game with Richie Rich. You know what I mean? Can you get away? You no know, Tupac, you no know, talking about dedicating that song to Left Eye for TLC. Rest in peace. I mean, like, this album has like more of an East Coast vibe because like it features production from Easy Mo B. Very underrated producer. Shout out to Easy Mo B, by the way. I'm friends with him on Instagram. You know, Easy Mo B, he's a very underrated producer. You know, he made beats to Tupac, you know, Biggie, Craig Mack, you know, Busta Rhymes. Like, his beats are so fucking amazing. I mean, straight up. And some of Easy Mo, Easy Mo B's best production is featured on this album. You know what I mean? Like, definitely one of my top 10 favorite hip hop albums of all time. Absolutely, man. Definitely fucking love this album to death. You know what I'm saying? And, like, you know, Tupac was actually the first musician, the first artist to have an album to hit number one in the Billboard charts while being incarcerated. So, that was fucking history right there. You know what I mean? So, yeah. A lot of people consider this as one of Tupac's best albums. Yes, I agree. Definitely his best album in his whole discography. So, yeah. If you're a fan of, you know, Tupac, if you're a fan of, you know, West Coast hip-hop, I highly recommend you checking this album out. So this is Tupac, Being Against the World, released in 1995. Classic. Rest in peace. And the last album I want to talk about is Jay-Z's um, fourth album, Volume 3, Lights of Tons of S. Doc Carter, released in 1999. One of Jay-Z's most underrated albums to date. A lot of people don't really talk about this album that much. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, um, definitely not his best album, but not his worst, neither. I mean, like, this album got some fucking bangers front to back. I guess because of the commercial, you know, route that Hov was going through at the time. You know, at this period, Jay-Z, he was, like, one of the hottest MCs out. Just coming out with reasonable doubt, you know, in my lifetime, volume one. You know, Hard Knock Life Volume 2 in this album. You know what I mean? Like, he was just making hits non-motherfucking stop. And, you know, this album came out in 1999. You know, he was on tour. You know, the Hard Knock Life tour with Method Man, Red Man, DMX, Ja Rule, Memphis Bleak, Beanie Siegel, DJ Clue. It was like a very successful tour back in 99. And you could also see some of the behind the scenes of the tour of the movie Backstage, which came out back in 2000. Very dope documentary right there. If you're a fan of movies like The Show and Rhyme and Reason, you would definitely enjoy Backstage. You know, and Jay-Z, he was also um going through that whole stabbing that happened at a club, at the Kit Clack Club. 
Noah. Um, he was at Q-Tip's album release party. And, um, in fact, this album was supposed to come out in early December. But the problem is that Lance on Rivera, the guy who people saying that whole stab, um, was bootlegging the album. So this album was supposed to come out like way earlier in December, but it got pushed back to um December 28th, 99, the, the actual album release date. You know what I'm saying? This album came out like two months before, after I was born. Like, but it was a very dope album, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was very successful, very underrated, you know what I'm saying? Like, nobody don't really, like, give this album that much, you know. I mean, this album is known, but to every Jay, every real Jay-Z fan, you know, talk about this album. But to the, you know, real hip-hop, to the, to the hip-hop masses, not many people give this album any credit. Like, this album got some fucking, but dope-ass songs, man, straight up. Definitely love the joint. The singles as albums known for um Do It Again, Put Your Hands Up, featuring Beanie Siegel in the Mill. That was a very big song back in '99. Uh, what else? Big Pimpin' with UGK, the song that put UGK on the map. Classic, rest in peace, Pimp C. Um, what else? Um, what other song? Things That You Do featuring Mariah Carey. Um, you got songs like Hover Song, fucking dope ass intro, like Hove just spitting fire. So ghetto, fucking classic, dope ass beat by DJ Premier. Um, watch me with Dr. Dre, NYMP, come and get me. There's been a murder. I mean, it's hot, yo. When he go at Fifty Cent, fucking with Jigga, your ass is dense. I'm about a dollar. What the fuck is Fifty Cent? I mean, this album right here, man, definitely. A Fucking classic, if you ask me. A personal classic, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Like, definitely, like, one of my top favorite albums that Jay-Z ever put out, if you ask me. You know what I'm saying? Like, definitely enjoy this album a lot. Definitely one of the best hip-hop albums come out the year, 1999. You know what I'm saying? Like, definitely amazing fucking album. If you're a fan of Jay-Z, fan of, you no know, East Coast hip-hop, if you're a fan of anything that came out of Rockefeller and Def Jam, this is down for you. So this is, or if you just fan of late 90s hip hop, this is the album to check out. So this is Jay-Z, Volume 3, Life and Times of S. Doc Carter, released in 1999. Must cop, Duffin Classic. Alright y'all, that was it for Volume 1 of my CD collection. Um, stay, be on lookout for Part 2, alright? Hope y'all enjoyed it. Salute.